You know, I have a very simple policy in life. Don't start crap. Let people live their lives in peace. Don't go around attacking anyone. Be loving. But uh, recently someone uh, did a video attacking me. For no reason at all. Uh, containing full of blatant lies. And I'm not gonna let the lies stand unrefuted. So that's why I'm making this video to set the record straight. Now this video is going to be quite long because this other guy who made the video did a very long video. In fact, he, he spent half an hour making a video calling me all kinds of foul names, coming with personal attacks for a full half an hour, coming with no facts and no uh, logical arguments at all. Uh, so I really must be living rent free in this guy's head. The first thing I want to point out before I start debunking the rest of this video is that right away this guy is off to a pretty bad start. Uh, in the video description, he calls me a British Norwegian guy claiming to be Swedish. Now that is completely fake news. I am a Swedish citizen. You can see my passport here on the screen. And I've lived most of my life in Sweden. Now I had to leave Sweden uh, a couple of years ago because uh, of uh, things of the situation in Sweden. And I moved to the UK and now I had to leave the UK as well because uh, because of the hate speech laws that they have there. So I've uh, relocated to Norway now instead. So right away we can see that this guy is uh, coming with fake news and uh, it's just gonna get worse and worse. Being awareness is important and there's lots of news that I simply don't have time to cover. But then I noticed that he's a con artist and alarmist with zero journalistic integrity. So it... So right away this angry foreigner dude starts his video uh, claiming that I'm a con artist with zero journalistic integrity. My question is, what's your source for that? Other than your video containing many false lies, which I will prove later on. Um, other than your video, what's your source for that? Because you don't have any. Unlike you, I'm actually doing real journalistic work. Going to different places, doing underground journalism. Just for example, last summer I was in Sicily reporting on the migrant crisis. Peter Sweden here reporting on the ground from Pasallo, Sicily, uh, where the Aquarius here behind me is uh, arriving today here with, I think they said about 420 migrants. Um, so far, how the NGO vessels from Save the Children and so on are actually working with human smugglers to bring migrants up from Libya to Italy as a human trafficking service. Um, I was there reporting on it on the ground, uh, in the harbors and so on. Uh, wh where's this angry foreigner dude? Wh where's his uh, journalism? All he does is just sit at home and spew bullshit into his microphone, uh, uh, spreading lies about other people. Also, I write for several well-known online news sites like the Swedish alternative news site Fria Tider, which is very big in Sweden, and also, and also write regularly for Voice of Europe. When there's big names endorsing him, like Ann Coulter, Paul Joseph Watson, Milo Yiannopoulos, Laura Ingram from Fox News. Ah, I think we just stumbled upon the very reason why this angry foreign guy made this video in the first place. Jealousy. Uh, you know, I've been working hard for several years as a journalist and, and I made a name. Uh, and um, this, guy seems it, this guy sees it and uh, he thinks... He gets a little bit jealous for, about it, you know. Yeah, I've been on Laura Ingram uh, right after Mike Pence. Mike Pence was one before me, and then I was on after him. And I have contact with, uh, with with several large political parties around Europe. In fact, one party is the second biggest party in uh, in one country. Another party that I have contact with uh, is one of the biggest uh, parties in another country as well. So, and I have quite close contact with them as well. So, um, and, and you know, I'm regularly retweeted by many well-known politicians around Europe and so on. So I guess he's just a little bit jealous that people look at me for news from Sweden rather than him. Uh, so, I mean, it's really sad. Why be jealous? I mean, he's angry foreigner guy has more subs than me on YouTube. I'm not jealous because of that. Uh, more people, you know, you know, more politicians and well-known people use me as source for other news. Why should anyone be jealous? Why should angry foreigner be jealous uh, for, of me because of that? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. It's really sad just see all this jealousy and hatred in the world. It doesn't... It doesn't add anything positive. You know, be positive instead. Don't be, don't be negative like this guy. Why hate anyone? I see it as a problem that this video has over 100,000 views and a majority of likes. Because in this 10 minute long coke addict confession, the bastard love child of Dracula and Porky the Pig r r r rambles on... So this guy thinks it's a problem that I make a video uh, highlighting the problems that are happening in Sweden. And he thinks it's a problem that it gets lots of views. Why? 
Don't you want people to know what's happening in Sweden? Doesn't make any sense. Do you hate Sweden? What's the problem here? And also we see the start here of many, many personal attacks and ad hominems because that's what that is what all his videos is about. He's trying to he's trying to claim that I'm some kind of alarmist and con artist. With never never proving any facts about that, but that's all just lies. But all he comes with instead are just personal attacks and ad hominems, as you will see uh, throughout this video. You're calling me a coke addict. What kind of attack is that? Well, just because I had red eyes in the video? Well, you know, I'm out here in the Norwegian mountains currently, and it's quite cold. The cold weather has a tendency to make my eyes red sometimes, and also lack of sleep doesn't really help. And I'm a very traditional guy, so uh, I don't even drink any alcohol. So no, no drugs for me. Keep in mind that this is the same guy that became a refugee thanks to homeschooling, seeking asylum in the UK. You flee a country because of war and persecution that might end up with you dying or in prison. You don't flee a country because you're a creationist who thinks that the earth is 6,000 years old. Okay, so this is quite, actually quite a serious thing from this angry foreigner guy. I, I really thought he was better than this. Uh, you know, you see, in Sweden, homeschooling is illegal. You're not allowed to homeschool in Sweden. And as many know, public schools are complete brainwashing centers uh, responsible for indoctrinating young kids into cultural Marxism and, uh, and being radical leftists, really. Uh, so public school is not an alternative. Um, so yeah, they made homeschooling illegal in Sweden, which, uh, you know, why, you know, I was homeschooled as a kid and my brothers are being homeschooled. And when I get kids, I'm obviously going to homeschool them as well. So being in Sweden is not a viable alternative when you are a homeschooler or being homeschooled. So of course I left Sweden because of homeschooling. Because I mean, just look at what some of the things that the Swedish government has been doing to people that have been homeschooled. Uh, for example, there's a very sad story about a seven year old boy who back in 2009 was taken from his parents at gunpoint because he was homeschooled. It's been called one of the worst cases of government abuse ever committed against a homeschooling family. The abduction by Swedish authorities of Dominic Johansson, a happy, healthy seven-year-old boy taken from his parents in 2009. Because homeschooling is illegal in Sweden. And there are many other cases of homeschoolers who have been given massive fines by the Swedish government. Even though they have fled to another country, the Swedish government is still coming after them demanding massive fines. And this is a sad reality in Sweden when it comes to homeschooling. And this guy doesn't seem to have any respect for that at all and, and instead attacks me. It's always interesting to see how he attacks me for being a Christian. You know, Bob Dylan had a song, you got to serve somebody. And that's true. Either you serve the Lord or you serve the devil. And uh, everyone has to make their choice. And judging by some of the symbols and logos that uh, this guy is using, like the Baphomet logo and the upside down pentagram, I kind of get the feeling that it's, it's not the Lord for this guy, but uh, people can always turn around. So if you're watching this, there's always a chance to turn around and make things good. He also wants to make it sound like he escaped Sweden due to political persecution, when in actuality it's because the family company that he's involved in owes 7 million crowns in debt. Because they don't like to pay their taxes. That's Dude, really? Do you realize who you're using as a source here? You're literally using hope not hate which is a far left hate group in the uk uh, who has ties to communists and they are actually funded by george soros you're using them as a source hope not hate they recently wrote a smear article about me claiming having claiming all sorts of lies uh, including that i'm british apparently which is complete nonsense. I'm a Swedish citizen and um, I mean I lived most of my life in Sweden You're using them as a source. Let me tell you the truth about this uh, tax thing that you took up after Me and my parents uh, moved to the UK because of the homeschooling thing in Sweden the Swedish government Didn't really like that very much you know, they really don't like dissident opinions very much. So they kind of made some bullshit up. And uh, basically what this is, it's a tax dispute between two countries. Uh, so my parents, they paid a tax in the UK. 
Uh, but the Swedish government says, no, we want the tax paid in Sweden instead. Uh, but the UK says, no, we, we want the tax in the UK. Uh, but Sweden says, no, we want the tax in Sweden. So there's a dispute between two countries, between Sweden and the UK, as to where my parents are supposed to pay tax. They pay the tax in the UK, but Sweden wants the money instead. That's what this is about. There's nothing a tax debt at all. My parents have paid all their tax. And besides, why are you attacking my parents? I have nothing to do with my parents. This is a really low from you, angry foreigner. And to further add, this uh, hate not hope group, they actually doxed me and my parents, uh, revealing my address and my parents' address. Uh, and there's actually been some consequences because of that. My parents' dog was recently poisoned and was almost killed. He was uh, close to death uh, for several hours, was vomiting and paralyzed. Uh, thank to God he managed to survive, and, but the, the, the vet afterwards said that he had definitely, the vet said yeah, this was a clear case of poisoning. And this came shortly after my, me and my parents were doxxed by this, uh, this hope not hate that this anger foreigner guy is using as a source for almost all of his false lies actually in this video. Uh, you know, he claims that I'm British. Bullshit, I'm Swedish, but that comes straight from the hope not hate guys. Uh, I mean, here's a question for you. Why are you using a far left group funded by George Soros as a source for your video? Why? Why? They are not credible. They are fake news. You know, they even attacked Nigel Farage and they call him Nazi and racist and whatever. You know, these are your, your typical far left uh, communists. But yeah, as I said, I have nothing to do with my parents. And my parents have nothing to do with what I'm doing. So why are you bringing this up anyway? Even if my parents had had a tax debt somehow, which they don't, which they don't. It's a tax dispute between two countries as to where the tax should be paid. And also I can add that uh, Swedish lawyers who have looked at the case thinks that it's absolutely completely bonkers and have no idea what the Swedish government is doing. They think it's completely crazy and it's a witch hunt against my parents. And there's even been uh, articles written about it on uh, Swedish newspaper Entrepreneur uh, talking about how ridiculous this thing is. But what on earth does this have to do with me and my work? You're just trying to use something, uh, association, to try and smear me, which is really disingenuous of you and foul, really. Say just about any crazy shit, right? Throughout this entire video, this guy's mannerisms. It's like listening to someone who did way too much coke, and now they're trying to spin you a story to get you to borrow them money. That's the level. Well, and what do you know? More personal insults and ad hominem attacks. They just keep on coming! The leaders for the three biggest political parties in Sweden have uh, recently talked about war. Jimmy Åkesson, the leader for the nationalist Swedish Democrat Party in Sweden, which is the big, uh, third biggest party in Sweden right now, said uh, that, um, quote, a war is being waged on Swedish society. Also on the same day, uh, Ulf Fristersson said that um, People are running around uh, shooting people and uh, running around with uh, hand grenades as if, the, as if there was a war in Sweden. And then we also have the Prime Minister of Sweden for the biggest party, the Socialist Party, which are in government currently. He was actually talking about uh, considering deploying the military into no-go zones, into these uh, suburbs to get rid of the criminal gang violence in Sweden. Now this only comes a couple of days after the Swedish government sends out the leaflets to 4.7 million households in Sweden warning them what to do in case of a terrorist attack or what to do in case of war. And this is really strange. The Swedish government is sending out leaflets warning Swedes to prepare for war. First of all, Emi Okusan was speaking metaphorically in terms of people experiencing uncertainty and feeling unsafe. He is not talking about a literal war. The moderate party leader Ulf Christensen said that criminals are running around with hand grenades as if it were war. Meaning, it's a f***ing expression. It's not actual war. It was getting too dark outside, so I just had to move myself from the window over to my uh, desk lamp so I get enough lighting for this video. So anyway, let's continue. Um, what this angry foreign guy is saying here is completely false. He is the one that's lying and being disingenuous here and spreading fake news. Jimmy Åkesson was not using this metaphorically uh, about people who are feeling unsafe or uncertain. Let me read to you what uh, Jimmy Åkesson, the party leader of the Swedish Democrats, actually said. I had a quote in front of me. He said, quote, It's a war against the Swedish society. It's a war against the Swedish uh, institutions and governments. 
it's a war against those who have built this society. And it's a war that we unfortunately are on our way to be losing. We are on our way to lose control. Unquote. That is exactly what Jimmy Åkesson, the leader of the Swedish Democrats, said in Parliament in Sweden. So again, I'm right. This angry foreigner dude is wrong. And going over to Ulf Kristersson, the leader for the Moderate Party, again what I said was true. He said that there were people running around in Sweden with hand grenades as if it was a war. Which is exactly what he said and which is exactly what I quoted. No falsehoods from me, no lying from me, but lying from this angry foreigner guy. Why do you lie, dude? This angry foreigner guy then goes on to claim that I have said uh, some pretty bad things in the past. Uh, things like uh, that I quote didn't believe in the Holocaust, unquote, and that I have said bad things about homosexuals, and that I allegedly supported Nazism and so on. So let me address that. Ah, here comes the fear mongering and smear attempts. So let me address this head on. Number one, there's a lot of fake screenshots uh, circulating out there claiming me to have said things which I have never said. So there's that. Number two, I did have some bad views and opinions in my youth, uh, something I very much regret today and are views that I no longer hold at all. I actually addressed this almost a year ago on uh, Twitter and I have written extensive articles on my website petersweden.com uh, where I explain uh, what, this, what this is all about. So I'll leave a link to my website as well in the description below if you want to read the whole thing but let me just explain uh, shortly what, uh, what happened. So um, a couple of years back I started to realize uh, how much the mainstream media was lying, how much fake news there actually was from the mainstream media. Uh, so I started to doubt a lot of what I had been uh, taught in my, in, in my years uh, growing up. Uh, you know, from, from, you know from, from the school books, from, from the media and so on. And uh, also fortunately I happened to come into contact with some people who had some pretty bad views, shall we put it that way, around the same time. Uh, so for a couple of months in my life I had, I had some views that weren't the best views at all. And, uh, but I no longer hold them at all today, so let me explain uh, what happened. So, um, as I said, the mainstream media, uh, I noticed how much they were lying, so I started to question everything that I've been thought, and uh, I started doing research on my own into all kinds of things. So I was deep into the conspiracy theories about all kinds of things. I was questioning the moon landing, uh, I was uh, looking to, I was questioning 9/11, uh, and so on. And um, I was also looking into these uh, flat Earth claims, but uh, I very quickly saw that they were pretty moronic. These flat earthers, though, so uh, I never fell for that thing. Uh, but um, I did unfortunately uh, look into some conspiracy theories about uh, the Holocaust and other events in World War II and so on. And uh, I also also I saw some things uh, coming from the far left uh, and the hatred coming from the far left as well. I also said some things in the past about homosexuality as well which I no longer agree with today. It's important to point out that I never had any hatred for anyone as uh, human beings but I was uh, into conspiracy theories and at the time I also strongly disliked some people's actions and what I thought was their actions like uh, the lifestyle of homosexuality and so on but again these are not my views today. After continuing my research and maturing, uh, because as you know when you're young you mature very quickly, uh, I quickly realized that these views that I had back then, uh, that, they were, that they were wrong and, uh, and false and, and not good views at all. So I left those views behind and I no longer hold them at all today. Now I think if anyone is honest with themselves, uh, everyone knows that they've had opinions and views in their youth that they are quite embarrassed by today. Uh, when they are older and when they realize how foolish they were back when they, back in their youth. Uh, I think to angry foreigner, uh, I'm pretty sure you have had opinions in your youth that you are embarrassed by or disagree with today. I think most people have, ha have had that. And um, so I think uh, this is a little bit of a case of, uh, you know, uh, the first one without sin to throw the stone, you know. And again, you know, when you are young, you mature very quickly and only a couple of months uh, you can grow really quick and mature really quickly. Everyone who knows anything about uh, humanity knows this. What views do I have today then? Well, number one, I believe that God created all humans and everyone is equally important to his eyes, no matter race, religion or sexuality. God loves uh, everyone. Black people, Jews, uh, Asians, whites, uh, homosexuals, women, men, everyone. 
God created, God created humans, God loves everyone. Number two, sadly the Holocaust did happen and it was a horrible event in history and uh, I it's really sad to see all of these genocides that have happened in history and that is something I really want to stop happening again in the future and that is actually partly why I'm doing my journalistic work and reporting what's actually happening in the world to inform people so that the atrocities like this will not happen again in the future. Number three, I support Israel and the Jewish people. If you don't believe uh, that the Jews have a right to homeland in Israel, then you're anti-Semitic. Just as if you don't believe Swedish people have the right to homeland in Sweden, then you're anti-Swedish. It's, it's very simple. Jewish people, they have absolutely have the right to a homeland, just everyone, just everyone else. Number four, I strongly dislike Nazis and communism, Hitler, Stalin, Mao, all authoritarian dictators, horrible people. Uh, part of my work, uh, part of the reason why I'm doing my journalistic work is to try and inform people about what's happening in the world uh, so that we can avoid mistakes uh, made in history uh, so that it doesn't happen again. And free speech is a really important part of this, by the way. Number five, as a Christian, I don't believe in gay marriage. That doesn't mean I hate homosexual people. In fact, quite the contrary, I love homosexual people. Uh, one of my best friends is a homosexual. Uh, even though I disagree with their lifestyle, I, st I, I still love them as human beings. Number six, as a Christian, I, I love all people and I don't advocate for hate at all, quite the contrary. I'm an advocate of love and peace. And uh, number seven, uh, I believe that uh, all people are sinners and we all... Uh, and number seven, I believe that all people are sinners and that we all need uh, Jesus and God's forgiveness. Um, number seven, as a Christian, I believe that all people are sinners and that we all need uh, Jesus and God's forgiveness. And I love all people. And I can also say that uh, uh, some of my best friends are Jewish, black and homosexual. So anyone trying to call me a far right Nazi, uh, yeah, don't listen to them. They're lying. Fake news. Instead, he's just making videos about immigrants with these ridiculous thumbnails that look like they were made in paint. Seriously, how f What's up with the bad acting? This is not a natural pose. I can tell you spent 10 minutes taking selfies of yourself. Well, this really speaks for itself. Yet again, more ad hominem and personal attacks. Criticizing my thumbnails because he thinks they look amateurish, apparently. Um, I mean, this is really not adding anything of value. You're not... Uh, refuting any of my valid factual points that I make in my videos. You're just criticizing my thumbnails. Pathetic. Sweden is already dead. We're just watching it twitch. Yeah, we have less crime than America. How's that crime rate in Mexico looking, Jorge? Are you feeling proud of your shithole country, Mr. Gonzalez? Now we're getting into a really interesting part where I'm uh, about to start uh, picking apart this uh, guy's uh, Lo so-called logic uh, with actual logic and uh, reason just like uh, Jordan Peterson did uh, on the Channel 4 interview. So I really don't understand why this angry foreigner guy is uh, coming with personal insults and ad hominem attacks against me while downplaying all of the actual problems happening in Sweden. You know, there's a lot of problems happening in Sweden and, and, and he comes on claiming me to be an alarmist and sensationalist and ooh, who knows what else. No, this is just nonsense bullshit that he's picking out of his bottom and spewing into the microphone. Uh, and you know, that is what people do when they don't have facts on their side. Coming with personal insults and ad hominem attacks. That's what people do when they don't have any intellectual or logical argument. They know that they have lost the argument. They don't have facts on their side. So that's why, they, that's why he's coming with these attacks against me. So uh, let's come with logic and facts instead and uh, show you why this angry foreign guy is completely wrong about his video, about me, about Sweden. So, you know, everyone knows there's big problems in Sweden, but how bad is it actually? Let me, let me give you the facts and all of the sources and so on will be linked in the description below so you can get all of the sources for what I'm saying here. So let's start with the rape crisis. Uh, in 2017, there was a new record amount of rapes uh, reported. 7,230 rapes were reported last year. Now, these are only reported rapes according to officials. Uh, the real number is likely much higher, but uh, we're going to go with the reported rapes since that's all we have. Now, this is a 34% increase the last 10 years. That's quite a bad increase. 
And um, how bad is it really? Because uh, it's actually worse than you think when you look a little bit deeper into the details here. There's only 5 million women living in Sweden. And uh, if you do the maths, this actually turns out that, uh, and uh, by the way, uh, the average lifespan of a woman is about 84, 85 years in Sweden. So if you do the maths, uh, one in eight Swedish women will sadly be raped in her lifetime with the current statistics. And that's only with the current statistics. If it continues to increase, it's only going to get worse. And all of the trends sadly have been that the rapes have been on the increase a lot in Sweden recently. When it comes to shootings, uh, Sweden is not doing too well uh, recently. Uh, if you look, uh, if you compare Sweden to neighboring countries like Germany, for example, uh, there's four to five times more shootings in Sweden, fatal shootings in Sweden, uh, compared to Germany. This is not a good statistic. Um, and uh, let's uh, go into something even worse here: the bombing crisis in Sweden. Why doesn't angry foreigner guy mention anything about this? Because in Sweden, in last year in Sweden, in 2017, there were 200 explosion attacks, according to Swedish police. That's a 100% increase from the year before. Now, these attacks range from everything from hand grenades to bombs uh, and so on. So it's, it's really serious stuff. You know, police cars have been blown up and so on. And uh, recently a pensioner was killed when he picked up a hand grenade on the, a hand grenade on the street. Uh, so it's really getting very serious in Sweden when, when it comes to the bombing crisis. Uh, and to make things, to put things into perspective for you, 200 explosions last year in Sweden. There's only 10 million people living in Sweden. If you extrapolate that to a country like America, which has 320 million, uh, the equivalent would actually be that there would have been 6,500 explosions in one year in America if if what is happening in Sweden, if that had happened in America. Let that sink in for a minute. 6,500 in... If there were 6,500 explosions in America in one year, I'm pretty certain they probably was put in the military or something. Just like they are discussing in Sweden at the moment. Because that's... Ins it's, a, it's an insane statistic. And according to Swedish police, the hand grenade uh, problem in Sweden is, quote, unprecedented for a country that is not at the war, unquote. This is the Swedish police themselves saying it. Yet this angry foreign dude is claiming that I'm the alarmist, the sensationalist. Is he going to say the same about the Swedish police as well? Because this is, what, this is, this is just what the Swedish police are saying themselves. Instead, this angry foreign guy again just comes with uh, personal insults and ad hominems trying to attack the messenger instead of the message. Uh, oh, and by the way, don't uh, think I didn't notice your undertone of racism there against that Mexican Jorge Gonzalez uh, that you mentioned in the video. Um, let's. Um, funny you mentioned Mexico. And you, you, you also called Mexico a quote shithole in, uh, in your video. It's really funny that you should mention that, because according to the statistics, Sweden actually rivals Mexico when it comes to hand grenade attacks. That's right. Sweden is just as bad as Mexico when it comes to hand grenade attacks. And this is official statistics. Source everything in the description box below. So uh, tell me again, uh, angry foreigner, uh, how, how, I'm, how I'm an alarmist or a sensationalist when I'm just reporting facts. I mean, it kind of seems to me that you are the one that is uh, reporting falsehoods here. Sophie and Suze. This is the country formerly known as Sweden. Then McDonald's themselves pop up and say, Yeah, that's a commercial flyer that was sent out in particular neighborhoods where there's many newly arrived migrants. If Peter Sweden would have had the mental capacity to turn a flyer he wouldn't be pulling the Islamization narrative. Ah, so here we have another ad hominem attack again, personal attack, uh, criticizing my mental capacity for not being able to turn over the flyer and see the Swedish on the back. Well, I mean, it's really besides the point if there's Swedish on the back of the McDonald's flyer or not, is it? That's really besides the point. McDonald's sent out a flyer in Arabic in a, in a, in a particular area because there's many newly arrived migrants there. 
And that is what I was pointing out. And that is true, that is what they did. McDonald's even confirmed it themselves. And somehow you're trying to spin this into something that, uh, something that, that I'm doing something, something fake news, something, something, something. You're the one being disingenuous and spreading for a fake news here, guy. Please stop it. And please just, and, and, and this, this ad hominem attacks, I mean, as we go through this video, this is going to become so more and more obvious. I mean, if anyone comes with ad hominem attacks like this, again, it really shows that they don't have an argument, but they only come with personal attacks. They don't have an actual intellectual argument. Turn the page around, you fuck dog! And ad hominem attack. The Swedish government is giving tax money to fund an Antifa group. A Swedish far left group called Jagar Här are trying to silence free speech, mass reporting those they disagree with. Basically, they are Antifa. Why is the Swedish government funding Antifa? They're not Antifa, you pale chode, white mongrel chode, diet milk chode, gluten free chode. Ah, notice again how he's coming with purse attacks and ad hominems to try and discredit me. Because the facts are on my side, not his. What I'm saying is true, and what he's saying is false. Where's your sources? You're just coming up with things that is completely false. This group Jagad had are actually becoming a, a partner with the Swedish government. That is true. And I'm leaving all the links to sources in the description below so you guys can see that I am telling the truth. So... Um, who are these Jagar Här uh, group? Well, it's a group of uh, Swedish far left, I would say communists. They have ties with Antifa and uh, now they're becoming a partner with the Swedish government to try and combat hate speech online. Really Orwellian 1984 stuff. I have to question, why isn't the angry foreigner upset, uh, worried about this? This is quite serious stuff. The Swedish, gov the Swedish government engaging in censorship. It's, it's serious stuff, man. Um, these people have been, have been mass reporting people, uh, conservatives on social media. For example, uh, Katja, Katja Janouk, a very good uh, Jewish uh, Swedish uh, woman uh, who is reporting a lot of very good stuff about what's happening in Sweden. Uh, she, she was actually suspended on social media after this Jager Hair group mass reported her. Uh, another another politician in Sweden, Anne Heberlein, a very good a very good person, uh, spreading a lot of news about what's actually happening in Sweden. Uh, she was also suspended at, after this Jager Hair group mass reported her as well. Uh, so they've been using these uh, communist tactics to try and censor people that they disagree with. And now they're working with the Swedish government. And I am highlighting this. Why are you attacking me, uh, angry foreigner? Why are you attacking me? I'm reporting about this, what's happening, about these people targeting conservatives in Sweden. And you attack me. Are you a leftist? Do you sympathize with these far left people? Because I'm beginning to get suspicions that you do. And speaking of Hitler, Peter is a fan. Uh, no, I am not a fan of Hitler. He was a pretty nasty guy, to say it that way. He met with Katie Hopkins. They were both in Sicily to promote the Defend Europe project, where they sabotage migrant boats. Now, Angry Foreigner here falsely says that this Defend Europe mission were sabotaging migrants in Sicily. What kind of nonsense is this? I was in Sicily. I was, by the way, I was not with the Defend Europe mission. Uh, I was in Sicily as an independent reporter. And, but at the same time, the guys from the Defend Europe mission were also in Sicily doing their project there as well. But I was not with them. I was on my own doing independent reporting on the ground journalism. Well, that was something. I've just been kicked out of the harbor by the police. Uh, apparently they don't want independent media there to see what's actually going on uh, when the migrants are uh, coming onto land in Europe. See, yesterday, the MSF team from the Prudence head out uh, to assist the Proactiva, who are currently rescuing three rubber boats in the Mediterranean. All those rescued by the Open Arms Fund, which is support of the Prudence vessel, have been transferred to the Aquarius. You can see that the Aquarius was hit down here by the Libya coast, 
when I picked up the migrants. And then I started heading up north here. And it's now heading up north here, it's no, almost close to Malta here now. And it's heading to Palozza, which is here somewhere, which is the port it's going to. Uh, where I will, re will be reporting on the ground for you guys, what's happening with the migrants. Peter Sweden here reporting on the ground from Salo, Sicily, uh, with Aquarius here behind me. is uh, arriving today here with, I think they said about 420 migrants. Um, so far this year, there's been over 100,000 migrants arriving in Sicily. Uh, here's another boat, it's just come from the Libyan coast, uh, picking up migrants there in uh, these dingy rubber boats. So I'm here on the ground to find out what's actually happening here, see how many of the migrants are women, children, male, uh, where they're from. If they're economic refugees or if they are genuine refugees fleeing war. Uh, so um, we're gonna find out here what's exactly what's happening here. So stay tuned guys and uh, let's see here what's going on with the, with the migrant crisis in Europe. I've just been kicked out of the harbour by the police. Uh, apparently they don't want independent media there to see what's actually going on uh, when the migrants are uh, coming onto land in Europe uh, here in the, well as where I'm now in Sicily it seems like the government doesn't want people to find out what's actually going on um, the migrants were just about to board land uh, I got some footage of them on the ship but as soon as they were about to board land I was kicked out uh, so it seems like I don't want to know want, don't want to let people know what's going on so this is uh, amazing um, but I'm going to try and find a way to get back to see if I can still report on it from uh, some another angle. So stay tuned. Just kicked out here from the harbor by the police, um, and uh, it's actually um, it's actually a police car driving around here, trailing me right now as I'm filming this, which is quite hilarious. Unlike angry foreigner guy here who just sits at home spewing bullshit into his microphone, uh, so. Um, but let me just clarify who this, what this Defend Europe mission actually did. They were not sabotaging migrants at all. Uh, it kind of, do you know where you got that from? You got that from the mainstream media, man. The mainstream media was all over that. That's the information you got from mainstream media. You seem to like the mainstream media a lot. The Defend Europe mission, they were there to actually monitor the NGOs. Uh, because if you watched my reporting, I found out when I was in Sicily that the NGOs uh, say the children, the doctors without borders and so on, uh, that they are actually working with the human smugglers uh, to basically do human trafficking. They go down to the coast of Libya, pick migrants up just a few kilometers off the coast and then drive them straight up to Sicily as a, as a human trafficking ferry service, basically it's a taxi, taxi, taxi service. And what the Defend Europe mission was doing there, they got their own boat to go, to go out to sea down to the Libyan coast and monitor what NGO vessels were actually doing down there to make sure that they weren't doing anything of this illegal human trafficking. They were not throwing migrants into the sea. Are you, you got that from the mainstream media. Is that true? Or did you read it on CNN? The cops did find one rocket launcher in the woods, and this one was loaded. Nobody got hurt. I don't feel worried. Well, good for you. Because if someone found a RPG in the woods near me, I would kind of be worried. So Peter Sweden is seriously suggesting that 20 meth heads are gonna start a civil war. Yeah, nice straw manning there. I've never suggested 20 meth heads is supposedly taking over Sweden. <sighs> this is why these kind of uh, videos lacking uh, intellectual uh, reasoning is so easy to pick apart. Uh, you know, there's over 55 no-go zones in Sweden where criminal gangs are completely taking over certain areas, uh, law, law, lawlessness is, uh, is happening, and so on. Uh, you know, as I said before, all of the bombings and grenade attacks happening in Sweden. Why, why don't you mention anything of this? You know, I'm not saying that a civil war is going to happen in Sweden, but what I'm saying is there are serious problems in Sweden uh, between these criminal gangs and, uh, and the Swedish society as a whole. I sound more scared than he actually is. The idea of a civil war is highly unlikely because our military and police are properly trained and highly competent and completely capable of defending these countries. Great! So that means there's no no-go zones in Sweden anymore? Hmm, you forgot about that part, didn't you? Well, obviously the police and the military are competent and trained enough to 
to get rid of these no-go zones if they are actually allowed to do so by the politicians. You know, it's the political correctness that are keeping them from actually do, doing anything about these no-go zones. But yeah, you seem to you seem to forget uh, anything about that, do you? But of course, there's a loud bunch of assholes on the internet who want Sweden to fail because they're white nationalists who, ironically, hate white people. The comments I get from certain alt writers on my videos are absolutely f disgusting. They yeah, I'm not alt right. I'm not a white nationalist, so. Is that argument out the window? They actually are, because otherwise they can't radicalize people and fool them into blaming the Jew. Nazis have always jacked off to the idea of a holy race war to end them. I think anyone who is a little bit sane in the head can agree that uh, Nazis are bad people and uh, have some pretty horrible views. And, uh, you know, this is why, this is actually a, a very interesting point that, that he brings up here, because uh, yes, there are actual Nazis out there. Uh, there are people who are trying to, uh, shall we say, both on the far left and on the far right, uh, trying to cause uh, division and stir up hatred. And uh, this is actually why we need to talk about certain issues, you know, if... Um, if certain things, if you aren't allowed to talk about certain things like mass migration because it's not politically correct, then that encourages some people to go to turn to the extremes, uh, to turn to the far right, to turn to Nazism, when uh, that is, uh, you know, the other side of the of the ditch. You know, I don't, I don't know if there's in English, but in Sweden we have a saying uh, that you can be on, um, you know, if someone is on one side of the ditch, uh, don't go on the other side of the ditch. You know, keep in the middle of the road. So. You know, one side of the ditch is uh, not talking about uh, the problems uh, and not talking about mass migration and uh, and and you know and being bound by political correctness. That's one ditch. The other ditch is going into Nazism and uh, and all that kind of nonsense. You know, stay in the middle of the road, be a sensible person, and uh, you know you have to be able to talk about certain issues. And that is actually how you prevent people from turning to the extremes, from turning to Nazism. You know, if you talk about uh, mass migration and certain problems happening in Sweden um, you know and actually solve the issues that will actually stop these people from turning to extremism that is why free speech is so important and this is an important part of why I'm doing my work to help avoid a repeat of history so we don't get another Hitler so we don't get another Stalin that's why my work is so important then Peter complains that Nationalist Norway wants to draft him into the army. I really don't like the idea of having to die for a country, but that's because I live in Sweden. If so basically what you're saying is that you're criticizing me for not wanting to be in the Norwegian army, but you yourself wouldn't be in the Swedish army. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Well, let me tell you, the reason I don't want to be in any army is because I'm really not interested in fighting any globalist uh, wars uh, and just for nothing, really. And that's what most of the Western militaries are today, so no thanks, I'm not really interested in that. He writes this post about how his hand hurts from holding on to a hot frying pan for a few seconds. Someone tells him to run cold water over it, and Peter replies, But then my hand would hurt from the freezing water. I can Ah. <sighs> really? More personal insults and ad hominems coming yet again from this guy. But uh, it's really surprising he didn't understand that that was actually a joke. He's attacking me for a joke. Hmm. Really shows the kind of intellectual, uh, the highly intellectual uh, logic we have coming here. <laughs> oh, man, this is real. You're actually watching this. He's trying to guilt trip people into giving him money because otherwise he has to get a job at a restaurant and out of 9,000 people, 70... Oh, so you're criticizing uh, me for asking people to support me for my journalistic work, are you? Hmm. Oh, what's that I see here? Look at the end of your video. You're begging for Patreon money yourself. Hmm, hypocrisy much? So to conclude this video, I just want to say that uh, I have absolutely no intention of attacking anyone personally over anything. You just let pe people live their own lives without going around attacking people. That's my policy. So, but if someone attacks you and uh, comes with all kinds of lies, 
obviously you have to refute those lies because uh, like a lie should not stand unrefuted uh, so that's why I made this so thank you so much for watching guys make sure to share this video hit the like button and make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already and make sure to hit the notification bell to get notifications whenever new videos come out and leave a comment below what you think as well and uh, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you later